Hey everyone, Jesse back here again with Maxon and Cinema 4D, and we are continuing to talk about the new updates and features in release 16. So hopefully you've been following along with some of the other tutorials. This tutorial, we're gonna cover the new cogwheel, what's uh, updated about it, and all of the new parameters. So I put this scene together pretty quickly to show you how we can customize cogwheels, uh, make them all uh, fairly different, but then apply motors and connectors and actual physics to them so they so that they work together uh, properly. So let's just dive in. I want to show you kind of how all of this stuff works and uh, and then you can take all of this knowledge and make something awesome yourself. So the cogwheel is still in the same location as it's been in previous versions of Cinema 4D. Uh, so if you go into the splines and then down to cogwheel, you'll see it, it drops right into the viewport. The thing that has changed are the different parameters now that we can uh, change. Um, so down here in the attributes panel, you'll see, you know, we can we can change the type of the gear. Now we can change it to, say, like a ratchet type, and you can you have all these uh, different parameters just for the ratchet type. Or we can go back to this one here and increase the, the number of teeth. And then all the way down the list, you have all these different parameters uh, that you can change just for, uh, you know, this outer radius with the teeth. Now, to the right, we also have this new inlay feature, and this allows us to change the type of uh, the inlay of the gear. So right now it's on none, and we're seeing this this uh, small little radius here. If we change it to spokes, you're going to see it's adding uh, this, this spoke effect and we can go down to, you know, we can change it to holes or arches depending on, or even waves, depending on uh, what kind of, you know, wheel you're looking at. And then for each type of inlay, we can change the parameters for that specific um, type. So for spokes, you know, we can change the orientation and we can animate that as well. We can change the number of spokes. We can increase the outer radius as well as the inner radius, we can also click and drag right in the viewport itself. Can change the outer width, the inner width. We can also add a bevel to it, so we're um, you know kind of beveling that out a little bit, which is nice. And then uh, we also have the option to toggle on and off the inner hole, and then you have different parameters within the cutout, so you can change the actual depth of it, or the width, or the orientation. So if you want to swing it around, you can do that too. So along with this update to the cogwheel, uh, Maxon has also included a bunch of uh, pre-made uh, gears and cogwheels. So let's go and find those. So let's open up the content browser. And under Prime, if you go to 3D Objects, there's now this uh, folder called Cogwheels. And you have a bunch of different options. So you have clutches, you have gears, uh, just a miscellaneous folder here, some ratchets, saws, and uh, some cool watch gears. So all you have to do is, you know, kind of double click and it drops it right into the scene and um, and you can go ahead and start messing around with those parameters as well. You know, if you want to make some adjustments to it, you know, it's a great starting point. So let's go back to our original cogwheel here and I'm going to show you, you can also, like you've done in the past for the cogwheels, you can add an extrude to it and play around with the depth here. You can also add some caps to it. There we go, make it nice and smooth. And let's call that our first gear. Okay, so now what I want to do, I'm just going to rename this to gear one. So like in my example, I have uh, a gear here and then I've, I've duplicated it. So I'm going to just go ahead and duplicate this and move it over. And what I want to show you is, um, you know, we could do this in previous versions too, is add a motor and a connector to it and have this gear here drive this gear. Um, but what's cool is as it's driving, you can still update you know, the, the inlay, the amount of teeth, everything like that, and really customize this gear, even though you've set everything up um, in your simulation. So let's go ahead and, and see how this works. I'm gonna rename this to gear two. I'm gonna go ahead and add a motor now. So let's go up to simulate uh, dynamics and add a motor. So you see it, it drops the motor right in there. And what we wanna do is take gear one, 
and we're going to drag it right into object A. So now the motor should be driving object A, which is gear one. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, press play and nothing's going to happen yet because we don't have a simulation tag on it. So by selecting gear one, we're going to go down to tags, simulation tags and add a rigid body to it. So now we should be able to see this spinning a little bit. Perfect. Now it's dropping because we don't have the, the motor or the gear uh, connected to anything yet. So now we need to add a connector so that it has something to rotate around. Let's go back to frame one and we're going to go back into simulation and go to dynamics and add a connector. So now we have a connector right in the middle here. And what we want to do is also attach gear one to object A. So now if we play this back, we have this gear spinning around and it's connected to this hinge. Um, it's going really fast, so what we want to do is uh, go into the motor and the angular target speed, let's just bring this down to say 20. So now it's at a little bit more normal of a speed. And what we want to do now is focus on the gear on the left side and we're not going to add a motor to the, the one on the left because we want the motor on the right to drive that one. Okay, cool. So we have uh, our first gear set up. So what I want to do just to stay a little organized is select these three layers, just group them together. I'll call this gear one, just so we know. And then now what we want to do is add another connector, but this time to the gear on the left hand side. So let's go back to simulate, go to dynamics and add a connector. We're gonna, just going to go ahead and swing that over to the center of this gear. And I'll change views just so I can center it up a little bit better. So now we have the connector inside of this gear, but what we need to do, like the other one, we're going to go ahead and select the connector. Just click and drag that gear into object A. So now the, the hinge is actually attached to this gear. Lastly, what we want to do is just go ahead and duplicate this dynamic tag and put it on the second gear. So just select both of these tags. We need to change the shape from automatic to moving mesh before we go ahead and play this out. And I'm just gonna group these, call it gear two, just so we're organized again. Hopefully if we've set everything up correctly, this first gear with the motor should be driving the force of this second gear. So let's go ahead and click play, see what happens. Perfect. All right, so we set our scene up correctly, but the cool thing with the updated cogwheel feature in R16 is that we can go ahead and, and really adjust the parameters inside. Say, I wanna make this second gear a little bit different. I'm gonna go into the cogwheel and I'm gonna go into the spokes and I'm gonna change this from spokes to, let's say, holes. And there we go. Now, all of a sudden, our second gear is, is completely different than our first gear. And we can still go ahead and play that out and it's gonna react just the same way. We can also change uh, the depth of the extrusion. So we can kind of pull that out and we can do the same for gear one. Just change that to the same depth there. Perfect. All right, so lastly, um, you know, we have these cool interactive uh, cog wheels that we can adjust on the fly. Uh, in my example, I did have some uh, dynamics with spheres kind of rolling down, hitting them, interacting. I just thought it would be kind of cool to show you that, you know, we can still do that. So in order to execute that, what we want to do is just go ahead and add in a sphere. I'm going to shrink that down a little bit and just kind of put it over the, the gears here. And under MoGraph, I'm going to just throw it inside of a cloner object and I'll change it to a grid array. We don't need uh, as many on, um, oh, sorry, here we go. And I'll just kind of bring those in. And I'm going to randomize it just because we want it to start a little different. There we go. Perfect. And let's just spread it out a little bit more so they're not hitting each other yet. 
All right, good. So basically what we want to do is have these balls drop and interact with these cog wheels here. So to do so, we're going to add another simulation tag, but to the cloner object this time, and it's still going to be a rigid body. And now if we hit play, these spheres should actually drop inside the gears and fall all the way down. And remember, we need to uh, change the collision from off to all so that the balls actually fall individually instead of one big unit. So let's go ahead back to zero and press play and see what happens. Perfect. And you see the gears actually jam up because the balls are, are uh, getting locked inside the teeth and uh, the physics won't allow this to actually continue which is actually really cool uh, and incredibly intelligent of the program. So in order to fix that, you know, we can decrease the amount of spheres going in. We can also throw in a ground plane here. Just make that huge. There we go, and I'll throw in, I'll just duplicate this tag up here, make it a static mesh so that it um, collides with the dynamics going on above and now when the spheres drop they're gonna hit onto the floor um, just like any other scene you would set up in in Cinema 4D. So that's actually gonna do it for this section uh, going over the new features and parameters of the cogwheel. Uh, I know in my example scene I went a little bit further and added some lights to it and uh, a little bit more gears and, and a camera move and everything like that, which I'm assuming you guys are all going to do on your own. Again, I want to make this quick, simple, show you the new features so that you can apply them to your own scene. Um, so now hopefully you understand how we can adjust all of these cog wheels on the fly. There's a, a ton of different parameters. You can go into the content browser and uh, get a great start and uh, start using this in your, your scene and your next job. Be sure to check out the other tutorials in this series where I go over the entirely new motion tracker never before seen in previous versions of Cinema 4D. I'm gonna show you how I tracked in 3D objects to a scene that I shot on my iPhone. The all new Cineware 2.0 where I go over all the updated features including the default layer, automatic synchronization, the region of interest, collecting all of your files, the entirely revamped bevel deformer now non-destructive. I'm going to show you how to take a simple primitive in 3D and make something completely different. Completely revamped content browser where I go through all the new objects for motion graphics artists from gift boxes to kitchenware customizable infographics, high quality sports package, a completely rigged book with flipping pages, title sequence fly through setups, and uh, so many more. One of the biggest updates to R16, which is the reflectance channel, I'm gonna show you how I build a custom reflective material from scratch and apply it to a watch that I modeled. Thank you and I'll see you then.